Um, well, I would say uh, my childhood, <laughs> maybe it's not very typical. I didn't grow up with a cushy you know, uh, family environment. I grew up uh, with my grandmother in a very small one-room government flat here in Singapore. 12 of us squeezed into a small environment. All my family members were not educated and we were really, really poor. And one of the vivid incidents, uh, or a very unfortunate day for me, when I was four years old, my mother had really deep depression and she actually poisoned my father's coffee and he collapsed. And then she jumps off. That day, I lost my family. I became nobody's child. Looking back in my life, what's the biggest lesson? I would say that life, it's accumulation of different seasons. There is something to be learned in every season, whether it's low or high. I've gone through seasons where it's just sure hopelessness, thinking that frustrating, so disappointing, and that these seasons are not permanent. They will pass, they will change. If there are hard times, don't let it be a tombstone that send you a death sentence, but more importantly, let it be a stepping stone that you can build, you can learn from it. And in high times, you know, learn to cherish that moment. Always remember to be grateful and look for that opportunity for that next growth uh, path. I think there are many times in our life we're always looking at at, oh, at the hindsight, I would have done better. Regretting will not get you anywhere, uh, but reflecting and rethinking and bringing those perspectives into your future so that you can do better and be a better version of ourselves is something that I would encourage everyone to do and is something that I do. I started working uh, when I was five years old. My auntie had a prawn noodle store that provides for the entire family. I was her little assistant washing the dishes, you know, cooking and serving it. I guess I learned uh, many, many different forms of skill sets that took me true to my career today and to my life so I can cook. You know, I can interact with customers because I think it's something that is innate. So for young people, I would say that every experience and interactions counts. Every experience can be used to accumulate into a bigger portfolio. So I would say do not underestimate any task. All the skills and different experience add up. People often ask me, it's amazing to be able to work for global companies and be a leadership position in companies like Microsoft and Google. I would say, you know, the poverty, the lack, the challenges growing up uh, really shape and define me differently. I graduated from NTU, uh, one of the university here in Singapore, and applied for my first job. And very fortunate for me, I landed in Lucent Technologies. What drives me uh, every part of my career journey, I would definitely say is the people. For myself, I was so fortunate where a stranger and a passerby offered shelter, offered free tuition so that I can get to school. And as I started work in large enterprises, sometimes I feel that, wow, I'm just not good enough. But I'm very grateful and thankful for male airlines and female sponsors and support of my colleagues, my bosses, who is always willing to help. If you're willing to learn, if you're willing to ask why, willing to challenge the status quo and ask why not, you will find yourself a lot of allies who are willing to come alongside to create something big, something different. But more importantly, it must be centered because you want to do good, you want to help, uh, and you want to make a difference. In the earlier part of my career, I would say I haven't been very intentional about which role, which job, which company. I started in Lucent Technologies and that exposure gave me an opportunity to follow my boss into the next job, the banking and finance, and went on to energy and utilities. Having the privilege to see many operate in many markets and many cultures and many different industries. I think underlying the fact is that we are all dealing and working with humans and there are a lot more commonalities than differences. But what I would say is that few attributes will carry you through. Ability to be open-minded, to listen intently, to observe, see problems, 
and want to do something about it. That would be my you know, advice from that perspective. I think growing up in an environment where I have a lot of lack, there is a hunger to want to work hard, to want to accomplish something for myself. I have this concept of always having a big vision, right? Keep your eyes on that destination that you are looking to get to. And then having checkpoints where you're always having conversation, you're always looking at, are we moving? Is this action moving you towards closer to your mission or to your objective? And then how can we recalibrate, fine tune and move alongside? Definitely have a growth mindset, especially in our era today. Uh, whatever we learn from school will be quickly outdated. It's very important that you read widely, uh, network widely, talk, observe and learn from people and be very willing to go the extra mile and do more. I always believe that people who are very faithful on small tasks and more things will be given to you. Give your very best and people are observing and watching. The second thing is more intentional. Know exactly where and what you want to do and create a roadmap in that sense. I see in large organization or small organization, there are a lot of people who are willing to help and willing to provide support and mentorship. Be grateful uh, to the leaders, so gratitude always creates even more access and opportunity. The third thing is, of course, professional education is always good to have. In today's world, it's not just professional certification, but also competency and skill sets. So if you think that, hey, you know, I want to go into a career in AI, would I have an opportunity? I think it's never been a time like this where yes, you do have an opportunity. There are many open courses, you know, platforms where you can get micro certifications and get skill sets acquired along your career journey. I would say, you know, continuous learning is super critical. Uh, maybe I share a recent experience. I went on a little hide uh, on Mission Peaks. Right at the top, I had an amazing, amazing view and then realized that Silicon Valley that we all know about is actually situated in the low-lying valley. In the low-lying valley, you see the ingenuity of humans. A lot of people spent and is tenacious and had a lot of resolve. Their sweat, their blood, countless hours that people don't see uh, to get to the point of innovation and to be an entrepreneur. Sometimes people think that, oh, entrepreneurship is equate to a startup or when you want to drive your own business. You know, for us at large enterprises, we value people with that entrepreneurial spirit, that willingness to take risks, that ability to communicate your vision and mobilize and bring it to life, to execute on ideas. So I would say entrepreneurship is something that is precious. It's a spirit that sees a problem, reacts to a challenges and mobilize resources to take that risk to innovate, that risk to make a difference and drive uh, impact. A lot of people come and ask me, wow, you know, you have an opportunity to work with global company in leadership position. But I would say that it's really not where I am today. It's where I came from. My history, my background, the challenges really shape and define me differently. For me, I think there's a lot more to be learned from the better scars. And I want to be that inspiration of possibility. And I would say my message is to every child, every person out there who feels that you don't have what it takes. To know that you can have what it takes today, you can alter your own life and reach out for help and look out for platforms that can give you a different opportunity and you can be who you want to be. Don't let your current situation and your circumstances define who you are, but really continue to dream, dream big. Anybody can make it happen.